Hello everyone, it's the Tech Talk and welcome back to our series on the Microsoft Entra ID. My name is Kazim from Nigeria and I've got Adnan Hendricks with me all the way from the Netherlands. Hi Adnan. Yes, hi Kazim. Nice to be back. I'm Adnan Hendricks based in the Netherlands and uh, looking forward to today's Entra ID with you. Well, what are we going to be looking at today Adnan? Well... Um, last time we looked at the new name changes. Now we actually going to be looking at what can you do with the product? How does the product work? So we're going to be looking at how to manage your, uh, tenant or directory. Uh, intra ID is used as an identity and access management. So you're going to be wanting to create cloud users, or maybe you already have an existing on-premises directory service that you want to provision in uh, Entra. So you want to recreate those user accounts in the cloud. And then there's things like um, setting up uh, normal security settings and also uh, creating groups and that sort of thing. All right, Adnan. So I know when we log into the new Microsoft Entra Admin Center, Adnan, the very first blade we see is the identity blade. So, so can you tell us that, Adnan, what do we do with this blade? And perhaps you want to show us some of these things that we can do under the identity blade. Sure, sure. I'll be uh, sharing my screen as well while I talk. So we basically, in I'm signed in into my Microsoft Entra Admin Center right now. And on the left-hand side in the blade, you'll see different options. So we look, um, I'm going to skip favorites for now, but uh, focusing on identity, under this section is generally where you'll be either be able to view your users or create new users. Okay, so just by looking at going into all users, I already have some in my default demo uh, tenant, some users created. So if I select a user, I can see certain properties and details of that user. So these are already uh, enabled accounts in my uh, Entra ID uh, directory for my uh, demo, I can go back to my users and go and create a new user. So just stepping through the flow of the uh, portal. So this is where I can enter in a names, etc., and details. But, but just quickly, uh, that I saw when you want to create a user, there are two options there. So what's the difference between a regular user and an external user? Well, creating a new user is really just an internal user in your organization residing in your tenant. The other option is really where you want to invite somebody that doesn't exist in your organization, but maybe in a different organization. Uh, this could be a partner organization that you work with and you want to work with them, right? So think about the two of us. We have team meetings. You have your own organization. I have my own organization and we can, you know, share data, uh, join up in team meetings and also uh, share applications. So maybe i'm working with a partner company i can click the second option and go and enter in some information and um invite that person into my organization so obviously that person gets an email they have to accept and then an object will be cre created in my directory um that works as that represents that person and then I can add that person in security groups, teams groups, etc. Okay, so for collaboration, so to speak. Perfect. Okay, okay. So you can go right there. I think you're about to create a user. Show us how to create a user. Well, I'll just use uh, one quickly. I'm going to call him Kazim. And then I can give a display name. And then the password will be auto-generated. Now, ideally, this is where I uh, can uh, copy this password and the account will be uh, created. Next, I can go into uh, properties and enter in 
extra details, etc. Uh, job titles, departments, um, you know, all the normal HR stuff that you have within a company and any contact details and also a usage location. So you based in Nigeria, I can say, well, you know, uh, this person is based in that uh, country and then any role assignments that this person might have in my organization. So this, uh, or just a normal user. So I'm just going to go back to uh, creating this user and you'll see successfully created. And if I uh, look for the user, and just have a look and see if I can fire, I did, let me do a refresh. Oh, well, there we go. Finally, it shows up a little bit uh, slow today. Refresh once again, this portal, uh, you know, I could use uh, PowerShell command line uh, tools to also go and create users. So this is also just another way in creating. I see Kazim listed there and is enabled, etc. Now I can share this information with the with the person that they can uh, sign in and uh, get access to their data and things. So with the introduction of Entra, I want to ask, do existing Office 365, Microsoft 365 customers need to take any migration steps? Is there any steps required on their part or, or they don't have to do anything? No, uh, any existing uh, directories that were previously running in Office 365, uh, Microsoft 365, etc., they customers don't have to do anything. So they could immediately log into the enter portal, which is entra.microsoft.com and use this new way of managing users, groups, um, the entire identity and access management. People are uh, totally brand new or perhaps some customers with on-prem active directory. What would these customers have to do to migrate to Microsoft Entra? Well, that, that all depends, Kazim, because there's, uh, do you have the option where you can go and recreate users like I've showed you manually. And then there's the option for hybrid management. So we can look at Active Directory and through hybrid management. And this is where I'm just going to refer to the portal while I'm uh, explaining this to you. So, um, existing uh, clients running Active Directory that want to move to uh, the cloud can go to hybrid management and use Azure AD Connect. Just a quick one, Adnan. I heard you mention Azure AD Connect. Hasn't the name changed? Isn't it Entra AD Connect now? <laughs> yes, yes. But as you know, there's still a lot of, as people can see in my uh, portal, those uh, changing the name and reference to the name changes is still going to take a while. And people like me is going to make mistakes and say the <laughs> old thing. But moving on, we'll be looking at uh, Entra uh, ID uh, Connect, you know. So uh, it's all about active directory users and putting them into Entra. Uh, and there's a number of ways. We have the Connect Sync and the Cloud Sync. So the Connect Sync is really where you're going to download that agent and install it on your um, local network on a server that's going to connect to your domain controller and it will just take whatever up organizational unit where your user accounts or group accounts um, objects are that you want to have recreated in Entra and it will run on a schedule and just send them to the cloud. That's with the connect sync. On the cloud sync, the view is pretty much that if you have separate or new companies that you will be um, provisioning or joining, integrating into your existing directory, you can use the cloud sync. So that really just starts the king, the sync from the uh, cloud and will pull them in from the uh, domain controller. So it's another 
little tool you install and the sync is from the cloud with uh, the connect sync it's from the domain controller to the cloud so versatility of options and then after that process you will have all your users um, listed under all users so much like I have a bunch of users and then obviously uh, licensing um, assigning specific licenses uh, to users if you need to do that uh, through uh, billing you have uh, the licensing where you can see your license features and also your products and uh, assign those licenses to those uh, identities or users you know, I know uh, in the old Azure Active Directory, we have the group types, uh, the security, Microsoft 365 groups, uh, the group membership types as well. Uh, is everything changed and then tried? You know, are they still the same? The nice thing is nothing underlying identities has really changed. There's been a lot of uh, additions. But when it comes to groups, uh, under all groups, you can go and create your uh, groups and you still have um, the type of groups as a security group or a Microsoft 365 or mail enabled group that you can go and create. So nothing really has changed. And you'll see that under groups, it's just making it nice so that you have the information that you need uh, pertaining to groups. For example, uh, group settings that you can go and um, specify whether owners can manage those groups, uh, etc. And if users can create their own groups, you know, depending on the organization that you uh, allow. And then certain um, settings such as uh, expiration of uh, groups and naming policies. One thing I can add, and this is something that uh, took a while uh, as well, is if you want to manage the tenant properties. So within Entra, you can uh, select or search on tenant properties. And this is where you can go and enable or disable your security defaults. So remember, you're going to want to have some sort of security, things like MFA, and uh, default security settings and some of the uh, default security setting is through the manage security defaults and this is where you can just go and enable it and most of the common security settings will be applied remember for those companies that already have existing conditional access uh, policies and security things in place nothing really changes for them but for a new uh, company moving to Azure, the cloud, that's setting up a new Entra ID directory, you can start off with managing security defaults and then later on apply specific um, configuration uh, security settings under protection, such as uh, extra identity protection and also the conditional uh, access policies that you can go and apply. All right. Th thank you very much, Adnan. Uh, I think this is all we've got for you today. Uh, in subsequent episode, we're going to be looking uh, at the security aspect of the Microsoft Entra ID. So we've created this some of these identities. You've seen us create a user, how to create a group. So in the next episode, we're going to learn some more about how to secure uh, these identities. Uh, like you said, later on, we'll be focusing more on uh, security. So we'll look at a lot of the protection features that Entra uh, provides, such as identity protection, conditional access, and all the standard security uh, configurations you'd want to apply in your tenant for your identities. And then also uh, monitoring uh, the security for your uh, identities as well.
All right. It's a wrap on today's episode. We're going to see you again next week to cover another aspect of the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's a bye-bye from myself and Adnan. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>